All right, guys. So uh, we have another level cap video. And this one's titled, I Became a Bounty Hunter in Star Citizen. Um, there's a couple level cap videos that I was like, eh, not as interested to watch because they're more like Star Citizen is the greatest game ever. And I think we kind of know that that's not true. I, I think even um, people that work there would agree with that. So it's uh, it's one of the, these things where I want to see their ex his experiences, but I'm not really drawn in by the the like more sensational titles. So I want to see his experience as a bounty hunter in star citizen. And, um, yeah, let's see, let's see what level cap's got. Oh, wrong button. Now I'm curious, are these player bounties or just NPC bounties? He's owning, though. Yeah, it's all NPCs so far. You could see his ship progression too. He went from uh, the first ship, which was not like, I forgot what it was. Then he went into the uh, the Hornet and now he's in um, like the proper ship. I don't know if it's a Sentinel or a Harbinger, but yeah. Combat in Star Citizen is a beautiful thing. Whether you're dogfighting in the upper atmosphere of Microtech or dodging asteroids in the rings of Yella, the game delivers a highly convincing space combat experience. And the best part is, it's probably one of the deepest space combat games around when it comes to skill and nuance. From ship type, weapon selection, component choice, to what type of atmosphere you're flying in, everything makes a difference and your skill and loadout choices dictate how you're able to approach each fight. Now one of the coolest things about this game is the fact that there's no skill trees. There's a reputation tree, but nothing like leveling up your hit points or damage dealt. If you want to be the best and most effective fighter pilot, well, then you need to practice. And some yeah. of the best combat ships out there are actually pretty inexpensive and expensive accessible in the game without too much work right off the bat. So rather than having to grind to get an expensive ship to make missions easier, well, simply practicing and yes, getting definitely. better at the game will allow you to take on higher threat targets and kill them faster. I've even seen players taking down some of the biggest targets in the game using the rinky dink starter ships because, well, in the right hands, even the basic ships become a threat. Now, I recently went down the bounty hunting mission lines, which I think is probably one of the better ones for new players, especially because the cost of entry is basically nothing and it'll get you familiar with the basics of combat. I mean, it's also one of the only mission lines. There there aren't that many in the game yet, so it's nice to kind of see you sort of see the potential for Star Citizen a little bit more when you when you go down this tree, I guess. Combat. I built up my bounty hunting reputation higher and higher until I was able to accept extreme risk target missions, which include enemy ships as large as hammerheads. And for anyone unfamiliar with a hammerhead, it's basically a sub capital class Corvette that is meant to blow things up like, well, blow everything up. And it's got turrets mounted on every side, so no matter what angle you approach, well, there's gonna be fire coming your way. And, well, lots of it. One small slip up and you could be toast. So to take one down, you have to have an idea of what you're doing and how to fly a ship. Fortunately, though, if you manage to get enough bounty reputation to take on an extreme risk target, well, then you're probably ready to fight one. Building reputation in this game takes quite a while, and it can be a little repetitive at times. I made the mission running more interesting for myself by swapping around ships, taking yeah. bounty missions around different planets, and trying different loadouts. Hopefully, they'll increase the variety of missions to make it more interesting in the future. When AI server meshing comes in a future patch, hopefully this year, it may even allow for some air-to-ground assault opportunities with soldiers and vehicles on a planet surface shooting back at you. Now, if you want, you can also group up with some friends. 
I don't think that requires meshing. Missions. Having someone on your turret in a hurricane can really allow you to take down targets with ease, and it allows you to choose a more evasive flying style, as you don't always have to be nose on target to continue dishing out the DPS. The only problem I have with grouping up is that the speed at which you complete missions isn't usually drastically different, and I believe it still splits your reputation earned and profit, so it might actually be a bit slower progressing your reputation to play I think once level gets into the point where he's playing against other players and not fighting NPCs, um, yeah, that that having the extra player around is is quite valuable. With friends and nice. in many cases. Again, hopefully down the road, missions will adapt based on party size a little bit better and encourage teamwork when it comes to running missions and gaining reputation. Now, what I like about running bounty missions is, well, firstly, the space combat. I mean, duh. Who doesn't like making ships explode in Star Citizen's stupidly gorgeous environments? Now the second thing is, it allows me to refine my piloting skills while testing new ships and setups. And thirdly, running high level bounty missions is one of the better ways to earn credits in the game, with which you can buy new ships, gun shields, and well basically everything you want to get pimped yes. out in the verse. It's certainly not the only way to make money, but it's arguably one of the fastest once you're proficient at it. Though mining and trading can also be quite profitable, and as other other gameplay loops are developed more, I would imagine the goal is to make basically each gameplay loop highly profitable once you become proficient. Now while fighting NPCs is fun and it's decent flying practice, don't expect to be able to jump from he had a PvE corpse marker. over to PvP combat and, well, do well on your first go around. Fighting another player is going to be a vastly different experience. So while I do encourage, say, bounty hunting other real players or engaging in pirate activities, just be aware that thinking you're a badass in PvE doesn't mean a whole lot when it comes to PvP combat. It's not to say that PvE isn't decent practice, it can certainly get you feeling more comfortable with all the nuances of your ship and its systems, but the approach to dogfighting another player is going to be, well, a completely different experience. So just keep that in mind. And again, down the road, I hope and expect the AI in this game to get a lot more difficult and once server meshing allows for a much more CPU intensive applications I expect AI to get much more challenging and fight more like real players maybe we'll even see some of that later this year with some of the bigger server meshing upgrades I actually think a lot of the AI coding is already there and just basically waiting for the new meshing tech to engage which could add a whole new depth to PvE combat as unfortunately making ships bigger and more tanky isn't necessarily really what makes bounty missions more fun. In fact, I think running high-risk target bounties in an Arrow or Gladius are generally more enjoyable because you're often fighting faster, more agile enemies, so it feels more like Top Gun. While running extreme-risk targets or very high-risk targets, I was mostly in a Vanguard or other heavy yeah, fighter, because and my targets ships. were slower and tankier, so the combat became more low speed and a bit more bullet spongy. Regardless, though, it was still pretty darn fun, and I enjoyed swapping around ships and Lodas to see how quickly I could run missions. I especially enjoy how some ships get really clunky in atmospheric dogfights while others excel. The dynamic of your ship's performance changing depending on its environment is really cool. Like the game recognizes atmospheric densities. How crazy is that? Like going from space combat to low atmospheric moon fights versus dense atmospheric planet yep. fights all feel and different. Your flying speeds lower will be different gives and you a speed advantage if you're different. in a fast it's ship. It's wild that this game takes all that into consideration. All of now some of the more annoying things that you'll run into if you go down the bounty hunting mission lines are dark missions. You'll often be jumping over to the dark side of a moon or planet to fight in pitch black. And for whatever reason, there isn't night vision or some equivalent in this game, so you're 100% reliant on your instruments to keep an eye on your altitude. And well, I think I died more from crashing into planets that I wasn't able to see than actually getting killed by enemy spacecraft. Sometimes I would just missile lock a baddie from 10 kilometers away if they were flying too close to the surface of a planet, and it was just too darn risky to approach with zero visibility. I hope the developers have some good plans for improving nighttime combat, especially since the missions seem to pop on the dark sides of planets like, well, half the time. And the same goes for dark asteroid belt fights as well. The only thing worse than fighting on the dark side of a planet is fighting in an unlit asteroid belt, as if it wasn't hard oh, enough to I don't think it's anywhere near as bad as the planets. Fight. Now you gotta do it in the pitch black. No, thank you.
The other major annoying thing is a target locking bug. Sometimes I wouldn't run into this bug all day, and other times it would happen just about every other mission, so it's probably server dependent, but basically some enemy ships just become untargetable, so landing hits on them gets crazy hard. Now if the baddie that you're trying to take out is a big fat target, sometimes it's easier just to use the force and try to predict your shots, but I also found that jumping away and then back again would often fix the targeting issue. Oh, now, I didn't know some that. Of the bugs okay. and other issues, I'm still really happy that I went down this reputation line. It's fun, and it made me feel a lot more confident as a pilot, at least when it comes to fighting NPCs. I look forward to seeing it expand with new mission types, different enemy ships, more skilled AI, and better rewards for running missions with friends. Currently, it's making me some decent in-game money, and I plan on buying a lot of other combat ships to test out different builds and just see what I like. I think this is a great first path for someone, especially if they bought a simple starter package it's and like want a the good only way to earn path. some credits to buy all the cool ships that they see. It's also a perfect jumping off point for PvP bounty missions and hunting down real players. And perhaps that'll be my next adventure. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully it gives you a good idea nice. of what to expect. I'm looking forward the to PvP with them. Tree. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing out. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited for the PvP side of things with him. Cause that's 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 level cap to me is is I watching battlefield videos and things like that. So he was always a PvP kind of guy for me. So I I, I want to see when he gets in, involved in that what what he thinks um, and and how how he fares. Cause I think that's when like once you start involving other players, it's when the allure of Star Citizen unfortunately starts to break down a little bit. But also, if if you find it, you can you can find the all the potential in the world uh, when it comes to when when other players start getting involved as well. It's it's like a, a blessing and, and and a curse part, you know.